Ready, sir? You can go ahead and begin. Have you ever been so thirsty that you feel like you could die? You know, like you're so thirsty, you just want water so bad, just thinking about water, it's like heaven itself. <laughs> well, this is how you should thirst for God. In the Bible, there are many like instances of thirsting for God. As in Psalm 142, 1 says, As deer pant for flowing streams, so my soul pants for you, O Lord. As believers, we should thirst for God like it is a saving glass of water. In this speech, I will discuss the main verse, uh, what the book of Psalms means in general, why I chose it, as well as talk about the application to believers and unbelievers, as also the idea of and uh, information of why I chose it. All right, my main verse is Psalm 42.1. As dear pants for flowing streams, so my soul pants for you, O Lord. All right. Unlike unpopular belief, this uh, book was not written by King David, as most people would think. It was written by somebody, one of the Israelites, during their exile into one of the countries, but do not know which. This book was used as more of a, a book of prayer and stuff like that. Um, Psalms is generally a book that's hard to decide what it means completely, as because the book is based on personal experience and um, prayer and worship to God. The reason I chose this, ver this verse was in the beginning when I was younger, I chose it because obviously I like deer and outdoor stuff. <laughs> but as I advanced further and read it more and understood it better, I now see what it really means and the truth behind it. This verse had a lot of great meaning. And uh, now we're going to see some other verses that have the same meaning at different places in the Bible. If you to look at your handout, here are some verses that go with it. Now in Isaiah 26, verse 8, Yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desires of our hearts. This verse, as you see with the bold letters, are what goes with the thirsting for God. We're waiting for you. We want you. That's what it means. We desire. We desire. That's kind of self-explanatory. In Isaiah 26, verse 9, My soul yearns for you, O Lord, in the night. In the morning my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Now, this verse goes with yearning, thirsting, yearning, I think the synonyms. And the morning you long for, you want him. Okay. According to BibleHistory.com, uh, chapter 26 in Isaiah shows his book showing trusting God. Now, in Psalms 143, I will spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. And this verse is talking about the land is parched, you know, like a famine, like it's not raining, you need water, you're like farming out here. When they're farming, they want water. And this is what it means like that. So that's how you should thirst for God, like farmers want water for their fields. If you put your hand out of the way. Now, now, as people, we should try to thirst for God in real life as well. As believers in life, we should look for God, thirst for God in many instances. When life is going good, we should thirst for God for health, you know, thanksgiving. We should thirst for Him for all the good He does for us. When it's going bad, we should pray for success, uh, for future through Him, uh, good and prosperous. And if not, then that's how it is. That's His will. We should thirst for Him no matter what. As unbelievers, we should, uh, not we, as unbelievers, people should thirst for good in life. I mean, if you're not going to thirst for God, you should thirst for, you know, good friends, a good, helpful spirit to help others out in need. And maybe through that, you'll find someone that is a believer in God, and that they'll help you believe too. Now, here's an example of the Bible from God of how uh, people thirst for God in their life. Too. My chose Philip and the Ethiopian, which is Acts 26, verse 38. Essentially what it is, is Philip was walking down a road. He saw an Ethiopian eunuch riding down a chariot coming from Jerusalem after he went to worship. He was reading the scroll of Isaiah. He did not understand what it meant, though, because he did not understand Jesus and what he had done. Well, when Philip was told by the Holy Spirit to go up and talk to him, the eunuch told him he did not understand. So Philip then read to him about what it means, what Jesus did for him, and the eunuch understood enough to when he saw water on the side of the road, he told Philip he'd love to be baptized. He thirsted to want to be with God. Philip then baptized him and then magically disappeared. Now, 
Believers should thirst in God in their whole lives as well as others as well. I hope through this look into this very inspirational verse we're from it, and that God and good were around us, all he does. And yes, it's hard to see with all the good he does around us because of death of loved ones and tragedy in the world. But every, everything he does is to the benefit affected by all. So because of this, we should thirst for God, for the good and mercy of him every day, we're, and we're dying of thirst for refreshing water. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you.